Hello and welcome to a session of set theory. Now set theory is a simple concept. By using this, we can solve a lot of different types of problems. Let's see what all types of problems and what are the things inside set theory. So let's understand the key definitions here. Null set, what is a null set or rather what is a set? Now set is a group of items, okay, a set of even numbers. So a set of even numbers will be what, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 going up. So it's an infinite set. What is a null set? Now null set is a set which does not contain anything. What is a subset? Now if I say the first set is a set of even numbers and the second set is a set of even numbers less than 100. So the second set will be having what 2, 4, 6, 8 up to 98 and the first set will have infinite. So the second set becomes a subset of the first set. Now let's look at union. What is a union? Now if I say list of all the even numbers which is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 and then we have list of all the odd numbers. So if I form a union of these two, it will give me what 2, 3, 4, 5, all the numbers from 2 to infinity will count in. This is how two sets can be unionized. Now there is another thing, suppose we have the first set which has the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and the second set which has the numbers 3, 4, 5, 6. Now if you look closely, first set has 4, second set also has 4. But if I union, make a union of both of them, they will have what, 3 and 4 common, so they should not be counted twice. So then the total number of items in the union will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is 6 items. Let's have a look at another one which is called intersection. Now intersection, if I have say, again taking the same example, 1, 2, 3, 4 is in set 1 and 3, 4, 5, 6 is in set 2. So if an intersection, which means that what is common between the two, so 3 and 4 are common between the two. So intersection gives me two items which is 3 and 4. Now how do we write union? Union is written as U, whereas intersection is written as inverted U. Then we also use a concept called Venn diagrams. Now Venn diagrams are nothing but simplified way in which we can write all of this. Venn diagrams are normally in forms of circles and square. So there is a square which is said to be a universal set, which is the master set. And inside that we have circles which represents each and every set individually. Now let's have a look at one example. In a school, there are 20 teachers who teach mathematics or physics. Of these, 12 teach mathematics and 4 teach physics and mathematics. How many teach physics? Now let's have a look. 20 teachers are there in all. 12 teach mathematics. Now it is very very critical to understand the language. 12 are teaching mathematics. It is not that 12 are teaching mathematics only. So 12 are teaching mathematics. So set A which is maths contains 12. 4 teach physics as well as mathematics. Now 4 will form the intersection of the Venn diagram. Now set A has 12. Intersection has 4. So set A minus the intersection will be what? 8 items. The total number of items are what? 20. So 8 here, 4 goes there. What will be the rest? 8. So that it totals up to 20. So this is how a simple way in which we can solve. We will have to be really careful about the word only here. Let's have a look at another example. In a survey of 400 students in a school, 100 were listed as drinking apple juice, 150 as drinking orange juice and 75 were listed as drinking apple as well as orange juice. Find how many students were drinking neither apple juice nor orange juice. Now 400 students in a school. Here we have a thing called they might not be drinking anything. So let's make a universal set which is a rectangular box which is of 400 students. 100 were listed as drinking apple juice. Now apple juice they might be drinking orange juice also. It is not apple juice only. 150 are drinking orange juice and 75 as both. So if I look at set 1 it will be what apple juice it is 100. Set 2 150 which is orange juice. So what is the intersection? Intersection, intersection is 75. So set 1 which is without the intersection it will become what 25 and set 2 without the intersection will become 75. So 25 plus 75 plus 75 will give me what 175. That is the total number of people drinking juice. So 225 students are neither drinking apple juice nor drinking orange juice. They might be drinking something else but that's not of our concern. 
Now this is how we have a universal set and two sets with an intersection in them. Let's have a look at another type of question. In a group of 20 adults, there are 8 females, 9 literates and 6 female literates. Find the number of female illiterate, male illiterates in the group. Now 9 literates are there out of 20. So how many illiterates are there? 11. Out of 8 females, 6 are literates. So how many are illiterates? 2. So total of 11 illiterates, 2 of them are females. So how many are males? 9 are males. Now that is how we can simply solve this. And given in the figure, we can also solve it in that way. Let's have a look at another example. In a survey of 25 students, it was found that 15 had taken mathematics, 12 had taken physics and 11 had taken chemistry. 5 had taken mathematics and chemistry, 9 had taken mathematics and physics and 4 had taken physics and chemistry and 3 had taken all the 3 subjects. Find the number of students that had taken x, y, z, a, b, c. Okay. Now, here is a case of 3 sets. Now, in a case of 3 sets, if you look at the diagram now, there is something called so many different areas. There is a, we have made a circle of maths which has A, B, E, D as the 4 components. We have made a circle of P which has C, B, E, F as the 4 components. And a, a circle of C which is nothing but chemistry which is D, E, F and G. So everyone has 4 different parts to it. Now let us understand what are these. If I look at maths and physics only, B and E become the common part between both of them which means that B and E are having both maths and physics. But if we take C as well, which is chemistry, we see that there is an E part which is highlighted between the three of them. Now this is the area where all the three pull in, which means that the students who have taken all the three subjects will be marked in E. Whereas in B, it will be people who have taken maths and physics but not chemistry. So it is interesting to see how we play with words here. Now let us go back to the question, 15 had taken mathematics, 12 had taken physics and 11 had taken chemistry. So M becomes 15, P becomes 12 and C becomes 11. So that is entire thing, Okay, the bigger M and the bigger P and the bigger C. 5 had taken maths and chemistry. Now maths and chemistry, it does not mean maths and chemistry only. So if I look at D plus E will make up what? 5. Math, 9 had taken maths and physics. So maths and physics is what? B and E. So maths and physics will total up to 9. 4 had taken physics and chemistry. So physics and chemistry is what? E and F. So E plus F is equal to 4. 3 had taken all the 3 subjects. So from here we can say that E is equal to 3 because that is the area which reflects all the 3 subjects taken together. Now if we go ahead and put it in an equation the way we have just written it down, we can very clearly find out the different values. Hence, we can find out the answers which are required to the given question. Let us look at a next question. In a class of 150 students, 40 passed in history and geography, 40 in history and civics and 30 in civics and geography and 10 passed in all the three subjects. No student failed in all the three subjects, which means that they have all passed somewhere or the other. There is nothing outside the circles or the three sets. Find the number of total number of students who passed in history only, geography only and physics, civics only. Now, let us make that circle again, history, civics, geography. We have those areas marked A, B, C, X, P, Q, R, right. So 40 in history and civics. So history and civics is what? B plus X, which is 40. Let us go the other way around. 10 students have passed in all the three subjects. So X becomes 10. 40 in history and geography. So history and geography is what? A plus X which is 40. So X is 10. So A becomes 30. B plus X which is civics and history which is nothing but 40. Now X is 10. So B becomes 30. Similarly C is civics and geography. Now civics and geography total is 30. So C becomes 20. Now, if we put this into the Venn diagram, A is 30, B is 30, C is 20 and X is 10. So, these are combined 90. We know that total of 150 students are there, wherein no one has failed in all the three subjects. So, P plus Q plus R will be how much? 150 minus these 90, which is equal to 60. So, 60 is the number of students who have passed in exactly one subject or physics 
uh, history, geography and civics. Now, using set theory, such kind of problems can be solved. But at the same time, we will have to be extra careful about the word only and exactly. 